when the all-new Suzuki GSX R750 SRADWT first appeared in 1996, it caused a sensation, mainly down to some clever marketing. Launched alongside a picture of its silhouette laid over Kevin Schwantz's 1993 world title winning RGV 500 GP bike, this image demonstrated that the new road bike had the same wheelbase and rake as the racer. As you could imagine this got everyone very excited, had Suzuki finally built a bike that could win the World Superbike title against the all-conquering and ultra-exotic Ducaitis. Despite the best efforts of Harris Performance, who ran the WSB team for three seasons before it switched to the All-Star A effort in 1999, track success was lacking on the world scene, and so the SRAD sales ran out of steam, especially when the R1 appeared in 1998 and stuck the final nail in the 750 class's coffin. But the SRAD is still a very fondly remembered bike that is starting to enjoy a new wave of popularity. An iconic 1990s design of bike thanks to its bulbous tail, the SRAD and its many paint schemes is now seeing a resurgence in popularity with not only road riders but also racers. In fact, Michael Dunlop will be lining up on a Team Classic Suzuki 1996 SRAD for the new look Manx Grand Prix on the Isle of Man a bike that looks absolutely stunning with its Lucky Strike-inspired blue paint scheme. If you are after a reminder of the 1990s Superbike glory years, the SRAD is a great buy that certainly won't disappoint when it comes to the ride. The inline-four engine was all new for 1996, and as it has a big bore or short-stroke design when compared to previous GSX R750 models, it is quite rev-happy. Although Suzuki claimed it made 128 brake horsepower, the rear wheel reality is just under 120 brake horsepower, so it can feel a bit gutless in a modern context. Assume it will behave like a Super Sport 600 with a bit more mid-range, and you won't be disappointed. The SRAD engine is a fairly robust unit, but it does have a few issues that can bite the unwary buyer. The first thing to check for is any sign of cam chain tensioner issues which generally manifest as a clattering sound when the bike is started from cold. The tensioner is a bit weak and on older bikes can fail causing catastrophic damage to the motor's top end. If this is good, check the gearbox on a test ride, as they are a bit fragile and can hop out of gear under hard acceleration. If you are looking at a car bed bike, be a bit cautious if it doesn't require any choke to start from cold, as this could mean the carbs are worn and fuel is escaping past bits that should be sealing, making it run rich, and therefore start from cold easier. If the bike runs a bit fluffily and doesn't fuel well, assume the carbs are in need of a strip clean and balanced. The SRAD was quite a revolutionary motorcycle when it was launched in 1996, and it was mainly down to its chassis, an all-new design and with the same wheelbase and rake as you know the story. The SRAD features an aluminium twin spar chassis with cast sections at the headstock and swing arm, where previous GSX-R models relied upon a box section cradle. Add to this fully adjustable 43mm inverted forks and a fully adjustable shock, and you can see that Suzuki meant business. Smaller and lighter than any of its 1990s rivals, the SRAD remains an impressive handling bike, and although most are getting a bit long in the tooth now, a few modern updates here and there is all it takes to restore its former agility. When buying used you need to check the bearings, as worn headstock bearings ruin the ride while suspension linkages are very prone to seizing if not stripped and re-greased regularly. If these two areas are okay, the suspension will probably be requiring a refresh in the way of a fork rebuild, and a new shock and a set of new tires fitted. This completed, you will have a very impressive handling bike that has more than enough agility for the road and can certainly take on a track day or two. The updated injected bike came with a steering damper as standard that the carbed one lacked, and opinions are split on it, as some say it makes it lethargic to turn at slow speed and remove it completely, while others keep it as a high-speed safety net. If you buy an injected model, ensure it is fitted, and then make the call yourself, the SRAD isn't really a slapper, especially if you have sorted the suspension. Here we have one of the SRAD known issues its brakes. 
The Tokoko 6 piston calipers may look the business but they are actually very poor performing and have an annoying and very common habit of seizing pistons. There are a few solutions, the easiest being regular servicing and fitting stainless steel pistons. But a lot of owners simply swap them for a set of four piston calipers from Anther Suzuki model to totally eliminate the issue. Get online and there is lots of advice about which models to scavenge the parts from. If you want to stick with original, a set of braided lines and some fresh pads is an absolute must, while an upgraded master cylinder adds some much needed bite. The rear caliper which is underslung and therefore gets hammered by road crap is known to seize up as well. So check it as working. If the bike has warped or discs that are approaching their wear limit, factor in a bill of about 180 pounds per front disc for aftermarket replacements. The SRAD was built at a time when sports bikes weren't too tiny, and despite its RGV silhouette, it is actually pretty roomy and comfortable. You can certainly take one on fairly long trips, and with a double bubble screen fitted, it isn't that bad. If you are planning on touring, just check you have the pillion seat, as you will need this to attach a set of throwover panniers to should you wish to take luggage. In 1996, there were no rider assists, and you don't even get a shift warning light or fuel gauge on the SRAD. Nope, all is beautifully analog, and there isn't even a factory fit immobilizer to worry about. That said, if the bike has an aftermarket alarm system fitted, remove it as soon as possible as it will almost certainly start to play up and leave you stranded. Despite this analog nature, one of the big concerns when buying a used SRAD actually comes from its electrics, so always check that everything works as the switchgear is known to pack up, and it is becoming increasingly rare to find decent used items to replace it. Test the horn indicators etc. To be on the safe side, if you are lucky, you may find a bike with a very early power commander I fitted, which is really cool but impossible to get reprogrammed now as the software is so ancient. When it comes to accessories generally with an SRAD, you are talking a new screen, anodized parts, and an aftermarket exhaust end can. Obviously originality is good, so look out for an original exhaust, Suzuki Bar N's original screen, but things like a fresh chain and sprockets new tires are always helpful on a used bike. Try and avoid bikes that have been hacked around too badly, and if you can get one with its original black mudguard or undertray which has a reflector that sticks out below the license plate, that is great, as a lot were cut or bodged to fit an aftermarket undertray. There again some like period correct stuff and go after the undertray and aftermarket exhaust, it's your choice.